So Dialty is a medtech company based in Irvine uh, with a mission to develop solutions to help patients uh, with uh, kidney disease. Uh, we need to understand the market a little bit to under understand the, uh, the uh, uh, opportunity here. In the United States, 90% um, of patients are getting dialysis in a hemodialysis center. This is a, a brick and mortar center um, where uh, patients go three times a week to get dialysis. Um, uh, the dialysis is done normally within four hours, so high blood flow rates and dialysate flow rates, a very powerful machine that does this. Um, the brick and mortar is a, a large space, 10, 15,000 square feet, and probably you know, a large proportion of that is taken up by a water room, which is developing dialysate in, in real time. The growth in that space is something in the order of 5%, um, and um, that's the vast majority of how dialysis is done. The other extreme is home hemodialysis, which is a, a space where a patient is getting dialysis at home. Um, they don't have a water room, industrial scale, so they have a tap. Um, they're getting dialysis either three to five times because of the lack of power of machines in this device, um, in this space. It's only really 1%, however, of, uh, of the market. So very few. Out of the 600,000 patients, we only have about 10,000 patients getting home hemodialysis. The growth in the in-center space is 3 to 5%, and the growth in home hemodialysis is 385%. So that's where the market's going. And it's going there because, as we know and as we've heard here, um, everywhere is moving outside of institutional spaces and, uh, and moving towards the home. So what we have developed is something that is able to, um, to, to play in the stage of, uh, of change that is happening in dialysis. A machine that is user-centric, that is simple to use by any layperson, but is powerful enough to play in the in-center space and, and every stage in between. We are on track for a 510K submission of the device that I'll show you here uh, next year. Uh, we've had two pre-subs. This is a predicate submission and we see it as a low-risk regulatory strategy. Um, and uh, we did a Series B2 in, in February. My team is made up of uh, people who have either been in production of dialysis devices in the past, um, uh, to commercializing devices, and, and our CFO um, has come out of Amgen. Um, we have a, a, an experienced team, and I think we're really excited to bring this to the market. Dialysis machines I think of in med tech as one of the most complicated devices you can go in. I wouldn't suggest for anyone to do this as your first device, but that's where we are. Um, there is water coming in um, at the back here. So tap water goes into the machine. The gray area that you see is a water system, like that water room that I talked about. We're taking tap water in, we filter it, um, we purify it, we heat it up, um, we get pure water, we add concentrates to it to make a very specific chemical um, uh, fluid called dialysate. We do this in real time. Um, water is coming in real time and it's outputting at about 600 cc's per minute to have that peak performance. The front of the machine is where the blood and the dialysate interface. So you've got needles in the patient, blood is coming out, it's going to the front of the machine um, and the blood and dialysate are touching there and the blood is going around 500 cc's a minute. Um, to make this usable, um, a couple of things, industrial design to make sure it's not as intimidating as other machines that you may have seen. Uh, there's a cartridge that the patient pushes on and uses a handle to connect. And then most of the interface then is with a GUI that we see in the front here. And as we continue to develop this, connectivity is very important um, so we can get that data, take it up to the cloud, and start to improve uh, dialysis, which right now has mortality rates of 12 to 13% in the United States. With that usability um, and the power of the most um, uh, traditional devices that are used in center, we now open up the market to play in all the transitional spaces that occur. So we can see both hospitals, nursing facilities, dialysis units. These are all places we can be, as well as eventually in the home. And on the modality of dialysis we use, it's, there's more than just hemodialysis. There's probably about 12 different kinds of therapy. We have compacted all of that in, in one device, so it can play in any space um, with any user. Our first 510K submission is um, allowing us to use, uh, when, uh, when approved, will allow us to use the device in all places but home. Um, we're expecting to uh, place that submission in next year. Uh, we then take the device through a clinical trial, um, which is about 50 patients taking the device in the home, um, being trained on it to use it at home, and then using it at home. And then we take the same device back to the agency and get clearance um, for the home space. The dialysis market is, is, is really a very, very dynamic space. It hasn't been for 
25 years, but the last three years have been extremely dynamic. There are lots of things going on. It started in 2019. There was an executive order by the Trump administration to increase the amount of patients either getting a transplant or uh, getting home dialysis to 80%, which is very lofty and probably unachievable. Um, but since then, there have been some concrete things that have happened on the payer side. Um, there is movements called Tippanese, which is extra reimbursement for innovative machines in the dialysis space. There is enrollment in Medicare Advantage, so um, in CMS, you're in an uncontrolled expense space, but moving patients to Medicare Advantage means that people now care about cost, and um, when they care about cost, they either try and decrease hospitalizations or get patients home. And there are new models like CKCC, ETC, uh, ICC, all of these acronyms which are really getting patients um, and driving patients to be in the home environment and, and helping to pay for that. We spent four years developing this product. Uh, we are now in our final verification validation space. Um, we will be completing that uh, over the next quarter or two and then take the device to the agency next year. We have a contract manufacturing partner for the disposable and a separate one for the device, which uh, we recently um, um, announced and uh, have started some of our um, uh, verification validation on the external side. So we're excited to complete this product uh, and bring it to the market. Um, we did do our B2 in uh, February of uh, 24 million, and we're doing a C series uh, next year. And for those that are interested, we'd uh, appreciate the conversation. Thank you.